Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, Project Selection and Initiation. This is Lecture A. The objectives for project selection and initiation are to identify the key elements of a project environment and HIT landscape, outline the needs for projects, how and why they are selected and initiated, construct a project charter, identify project stakeholders, generate a stakeholder register. We will be focusing on the first two objectives during Lecture A. We will cover two essential project management topics, project selection and project initiation. Project selection is most often an organizational decision that determines which projects will be undertaken and which will not. This selection represents the implementation of an organizational strategy and requires a clear understanding of environmental factors in and outside the organization. In health IT specific projects, it is critical that project selection takes into account the health IT landscape. We will provide an overview of why project selection is an essential process and how it relates to organizational environment and the health IT landscape. As the name implies, project initiation stresses the importance of getting your health IT project off to a strong start and setting it up for success. This unit also deals with some critical deliverables and events that occur during early stages of projects. The key deliverables are the project charter and the stakeholder register, so we'll be discussing those. A key event is the project kickoff meeting. It is important to stress how critical these activities at the start of a project are to the project's eventual success. There's a lot of experience in project management. When projects fail, it is often because of inadequate attention to these early stages and ensuring that the project got off to a strong start. Project initiation helps to frame and ground the project that you are about to begin. It helps your stakeholders in understanding what's going to be in and what's going to be out and exactly what they should expect to do. Before diving into details, let's look at the major factors influencing project selection as well as the steps that should be taken prior to deciding to move forward with a project. First, the project environment and HIT landscape corresponding to the project should be analyzed. Then, the selection process and principles should be reviewed and the appropriate selection methods applied. The completion of these steps should provide a realistic picture of how a project originates and how it evolves from a good idea to an acceptable and potentially viable project in its respective organization. Prior to the decision to undertake a project, it is important to gain a solid understanding of the project environment. The project environment consists of two key components, enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets. Enterprise environmental factors have to do with organizational culture. Projects and organizations are often managed by people who have unique cultural perspectives and specific ways of working, thinking, and acting. The impact of these factors should be considered closely prior to selecting and greenlighting any project. During the project selection process, one of the top priorities is to develop a clear understanding of the project environment. When evaluating an enterprise and its environmental factors, the following key environmental factors should be considered. Organizational culture and cultural perspective of all involved parties. Will the culture support the project and the steps required to successfully undertake the project? Existence or lack of a project management information system. Is there a system in place to support documenting all aspects of the project and to facilitate the key elements of monitoring and controlling the project? Workflow and processes. Are there established and accepted step-by-step -step enforceable protocols for how to organize and manage a project? Human resource pool. Does the organization have staff with the skills and knowledge to undertake the project? Organizational process assets are the tools and systems that exist in a specific environment or organization to support the project management process. 
It is important to keep in mind that the best project plan may still lead to a failed project if the organization you are working in does not have the tool set or vocabulary to comprehend and execute what you plan. During the project selection, the existence and value of the following process assets should be considered. Policies. Are there documented and enforceable policies that support the required approach to the proposed project? Procedures. Have procedures been established that will facilitate the completion of each component of this proposed project? Standards. What standards exist at the organizational level? Do these standards add to or detract from possible project success? Guidelines. Are there guidelines for how to best approach the specific tasks required by the proposed project? Historical information. Is there a documented history in the organization of similar projects? Lessons learned. If similar previous projects have been undertaken, is there a documented set of lessons learned that can help guide the proposed project toward success? It is important for project managers to gain a clear understanding of the cultural elements common to the healthcare industry and its various organizations. If you work or have worked in a healthcare organization, you likely already have a good sense of the general culture of the healthcare workplace. If you have not worked in this environment, it is beneficial to develop this understanding before you take on HIT projects. When working in a healthcare environment, consider the culture of the distinct groups and individuals that make up the workforce. This includes work groups such as nurses and physicians. Consider power dynamics, varying cultural perspectives such as gender, race, and ethnicity. The cultural diversity because of international medical graduates trained elsewhere in the world and the impact of ethical standards enforced by each cultural group in the overall culture of the healthcare organization. The ultimate goal of the healthcare organization is generally patient care, and it is important to consider the sum of all these cultural factors and how they impact patient care. The next two slides address two significant, current, cultural phenomena in healthcare environments, blame and safety. As stated in the ONC HIT Curriculum Component 2, The Culture of Healthcare, quote, the blame culture, end quote, that sometimes exists in organizations can interfere with organizational learning and improvement. The blame culture is characterized by a high degree of organizational rigidity and by an emphasis on strict compliance with existing practices. A blame culture can easily fall unintentionally into an organization that is overly rigid and rule-oriented and when there is a focus on assigning blame to individuals for system failures. The result for members of such organizations is fear of punishment, a tendency to avoid risk and to distrust. The predominant response to error or near misses becomes silence because workers are afraid to come forward. The Culture of Healthcare curriculum continues to state that the culture of safety is, quote, characterized by organizational learning, by an environment in which members believe it is okay to question existing practices, where management expresses openness to worker input, end quote. Safety culture relates so strongly to not only workforce safety, such as fewer needle sticks and other on-the-job injuries, but also because it is so important for patient safety. First, safety culture is defined at the group level, referring to shared values among all members of the group. Second, safety culture is concerned with formal safety issues in the organization, including its management and supervisory systems. Third, safety culture emphasizes the contribution from everyone at every level of the organization. Fourth, safety culture has an impact on members' behavior at work, and it is usually reflected in a relationship between reward systems and safety performance. Safety culture is reflected in an organization's willingness to develop and learn from errors, incidents, and accidents. Finally, safety culture, when present, should be relatively enduring, stable, and resistant to change. Such environments have an overall commitment to quality, 
Ideally, this will lead to uninhibited reporting of problems, to extensive information sharing about problems, and to organizational response that follow up with remediation directed not at removing offending individuals, but rather improving processes or execution through staff training and the like. The next item to consider in project selection is the overall health IT landscape. Taking the time to survey the current and future health IT landscape will provide useful perspective regarding the viability of any potential HIT project. In the past, the level of collaboration between information technology professionals and healthcare professionals has varied greatly from project to project and organization to organization. Historically, projects such as medical imaging have required sophisticated equipment and technology and required tight collaboration. As well, the nursing profession has been very closely tied to informatics for monitoring patients. For a very long time, billing and coding projects have used technology and required collaboration with information technology groups. However, the concept of a complete and unified information system in the healthcare landscape is relatively new in the United States. Systems vary widely between institutions, and the basic communication network necessary to connect the entire system does not yet exist. Technology is evolving in conjunction with the healthcare system. As a consequence, the health information technology landscape is in a state of flux. The result of this flux is that the healthcare information landscape is being designed and organized from the ground up. This includes the infrastructure, equipment, software, training, and other resources necessary to make it all work. Due to the fledgling nature of a unified healthcare IT landscape, there are additional challenges. Many enterprises and institutions will lean toward using existing resources instead of building new capabilities to accommodate the evolving landscape. It is essential that the strategic plan put forth by an institution translates into the selection of and support for the appropriate health IT projects that fit the evolving healthcare IT landscape. What does meaningful use have to do with project management? Meaningful use, often called MU, is becoming a major factor in the healthcare IT selection process. MU is not about implementing a technology or a specific software or vendor application, but about creating a better system of managing information. This information is consistent, efficient, reliable, and safe, and complies with privacy and security issues while allowing the eventual interchange with all other institutions in the health system. Legal requirements to achieve MU in order to receive government funding for many HIT projects is radically shaping how projects are proposed and selected. Projects incorporating MU should include redesign of workflow to show process improvement. The work needs to be driven by clinicians and introduce major changes in process, workflow, and system structure. MU efforts are designed to create programs and projects that will lead to improved data collection and meaningful use of the collected data. MU also aims to use technology to improve care, delivery, quality, and outcomes in measurable ways. Project management concepts and principles definitely help the actual clinical staff address the various changes that are required. In the context of this HIT project management course, it is important to understand the significant impact of MU on project selection in HIT environments. The actual landscape in health IT is very localized and fragmented. Most organizations introduced some form of electronic documentation and process years ago. However, these efforts were largely performed in isolation while technology was evolving in parallel. Healthcare organizations now look more like a patchwork of applications and platforms with multiple inconsistent interfaces. Such systems will become more and more difficult to manage and are prone to failure. Maintaining and updating these patchwork systems is very expensive and time-consuming. The goal for most organizations should be to apply a more global perspective to updating existing systems and implementing new systems. This is a major factor in project selection for healthcare IT projects.
Currently, there are scattered instances of electronic medical records and electronic health records, but information exchange between systems is challenging. A truly robust information exchange platform and standards for communication do not fully exist. At present, the general information system is being conceived, built, and tested, all in unison. The challenge in today's healthcare IT environment is to select projects that focus on building infrastructure that will enable secure information sharing across the entire healthcare ecosystem. Now that we have a better understanding of both the HIT world and what needs to get done, we need to determine how this will translate into projects that will lead to an effective national healthcare IT infrastructure. The Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health Act, HITECH Act, sets the goals for MU in HIT. As organizations become more familiar with meaningful use criteria, they can begin to use the standard high-tech definitions of healthcare IT roles to identify and assign resources to projects and to determine what objectives can be met for the next two to four years. Given the evolving set of requirements and technologies, even in that short time frame, establishing and following a prescribed plan will be challenging. Once the actual state of HIT processes and workflow are analyzed, the healthcare industry and various organizations will more effectively select and implement HIT projects that strive to achieve meaningful use objectives. For most health practitioners and organizations, it is worth looking into the financial incentive of the meaningful use criteria and timeline since they also carry penalty for non-compliance. The final set of factors to consider in project selection is called project selection principles. These are the key drivers that predetermine a project's anticipated viability and influence its selection for implementation. Project selection is often undertaken at the organizational level by a group of subject matter experts and senior management. These individuals have the perspective to know why the project is good for the enterprise and how it fits into an overall strategic plan. They are in a position to define what the high-level requirements need to be. Common factors influencing project selection are market demand, organizational needs, customer request, technology requirements, legal requirements, mandate from regulations. This is an important responsibility for senior management, and often the project manager does not have access to this information. It is important for the project manager to know and understand the rationale for undertaking the project, what its priority is, and how it is connected to the larger strategic plan of an organization. Project selection is a formal process, usually under the responsibilities of senior management. The project selection process is ideally linked to and driven by a strategic plan and part of a portfolio or a program management system that organizes groups of projects into clear and concrete strategic bundles. By grouping projects and linking those to strategic goals, stakeholders can be kept involved and interested in project outcomes. Most organizations have limited resources and budget and benefit greatly from prioritizing projects based on a clear set of strategic goals. A step in an effective project prioritization and selection process is to produce a strategic plan. With a strategic plan in place, a business area analysis should be performed to validate how and where the business goals and budget are assigned and what controls are in place. Next, a business case should be constructed for all proposed projects. The business case is a document that clarifies the idea behind the project, the potential cost and benefits to the organization. This process results in a list of acceptable potential projects with clearly defined cost and benefits. Finally, the organizational leadership can select projects and assign resources based on priority as defined in the various elements of the business case. One of the most commonly used tools for project analysis and selection is called SWOT. SWOT helps identify strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats in potential projects. SWOT analysis is usually performed by groups of subject matter experts in an organization. 
In simple terms, SWOT is a series of brainstorming sessions. As shown in the diagram on the lecture slide, typically SWOT analysis involves the use of a grid that tracks project criteria into categories. We can run our project ideas through the grid and see how the project fits with what we consider an opportunity or threat based on our strengths and weaknesses. It does require that the organization has already worked on its actual strengths and weaknesses and have a very good idea of the risk and opportunity in the market. The business case is the next issue that would be considered after the project is acceptable from the strategic analysis. Senior management can go further in detail on the viability of the project ideas and include cost benefits and strategic goals alignment and all other necessary components that will support and validate the idea into a viable project. The business case typically includes the following components. Benefits to the organization. Cost benefits analysis over time. Consequences if the project is not done. Full life cycle costs qualitative models, quantitative models, risks. If further analysis is required, there are various qualitative and quantitative approaches and tools that can be applied to project selection. On the qualitative side, project selection often comes down to subject matter expert judgment, the idea that certain projects that are considered must do and therefore untouchable in a project selection process. Finally, there are internal or external mandates, projects that are absolutely required for one reason or another. Quantitative models or financial tools, which we will not cover in depth, use existing or historical project data to predict project benefit within very specific parameters. These models include net present value, internal rate of return, return on investment, and payback period all provide prediction of success based on concrete data and clear definitions of success in numerical terms. This concludes Lecture A of Project Selection and Initiation. In summary, we have given a brief overview of project selection and initiation, including identifying key elements of a project environment and health IT landscape being able to outline the needs for projects and understanding the variety of possible needs and motivations for projects, and how and why they are selected and initiated.